Welcome back, folks. So we completed our Cepheus Protocol mobile infantry playthrough. We basically won the game. And I thought that we would do an evaluation of the mobile infantry doctrine because we've been through the game now using that. And I thought we'd take a look at the pros and the cons of selecting the mobile infantry doctrine. But before we jump into that, uh, I want to say a gigantic thank you to all of you for watching the videos, for liking and subscribing. The series just got an amazing amount of attention and I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys. You guys are, are awesome. Uh, the game is in early access at the moment, so changes may happen. So what we had in the playthrough that we had with the mobile infantry may change moving forward. But if you want to go back and take a look at the mobile infantry playthrough, I'll stick a card in the top right corner of the video right now. Okay, let's take a look at the abilities that we have available in the mobile infantry doctrine. So the first one, the cheapest one that we get is the grenade launcher. The grenade launcher is used by the assault class and it is great for taking down spawning pods and groups of infected. It's also really useful against uh, the juggernauts and leviathans. It basically, it, you launch grenades and it does a lot of damage. And it does replace any normal rifle that the assault class may have. So you have to buy the grenade launcher as a new weapon for, for your assault class and they will lose their rifle. But it is well worth doing for one or two assaults in your group because they do a lot of damage and they really do take spawning supports down quite quick. In fact, in my view, the grenade launcher is the most useful ability in the mobile infantry list of abilities and it's also the cheapest costing just one doc doctrine point next we move on to the mutt which costs two doctrine points mutt is a rolling turret you might say so it's from? a moving turret you that can move there around before, was with it? your squads or uh, on its own it packs a powerful punch. It's it really hits hard uh, whenever it fires, but it does need it was further both over. fuel and ammo, which yeah. is a downside. And uh, so the fact that you have you to have supply trucks uh, providing it with fuel, if you're using it in, a, in an offensive manner, I think that is a downside mm, to the map, even though it is really nice real with quick. the powerful punch that it and packs. Get some ammo. Uh, but I think maybe going with heavies instead of mutts is preferred because the heavies, they yeah. just need ammo. Get you can here. always get ammo crates in or whatever. There's just is this over here holding? It stock is... up when you take a control point. You have we almost killed points. the world uh, where last time, where you can but... get ammo. So not this time. That's I sure. think the heavies with the, the heavy machine guns are probably a better bet than the mutt. Uh, also, it moves too fast compared to your troops. So if you include a mutt in a group of troops that you are sending out on the offensive, it'll move way ahead of them and start attacking and getting attacked way before your group reaches your destination. So it might be a good idea to put them into their own groups instead okay. of grouping them with your regular troops there we go. because then you can just now select where? your group of troops move them and then move them there's a later big boy there it's time to do so when the troops have a bit of a there head start some heading down here uh, i do feel this. that it could maybe hold a bit more this fuel uh, it can't move that far in my opinion By those so maybe uh Adjusting the amount of fuel the mutt can hold mm. would make it more useful. Next, we have the mule. 
costs three doctrine points and it is basically a, a rolling ammo crate so you have your mule you can send it out with your squads and uh, they will be able to grab ammo from it i do feel that the radius that the mule has where the troops can grab ammo from it is maybe a tiny bit too small uh, because if you have a group of like 10 soldiers in a wedge formation or in a line formation then the outermost ones won't be able to grab any uh, ammo from from the mule uh, also like the mutt i think it moves a little bit too fast it will head out way in advance of your of your squad of troops so maybe keeping it in a separate squad together with a mutt uh, would be better because if you just move it together with your troops even though they're running uh, the mule and the mutt will get there first so you'll be sending them into the combat before your actual firepower hits which is is not a good thing so i think it would be nice if in a squad the mule would adopt the speed that your soldiers are using so if they're walking then it'll move at a walking speed if they're running then it'll move at a running speed that matches the soldiers i think that would make it more useful it does save you money over time to have the mule because instead of calling in ammo crates at uh, $500 a pop, the mule can just refill at the control points. So, so you do save money over time having the mules. Next are the javelins. They cost four doctrine points. Again, this is a replacement for their assault classes rifle. So you can buy a javelin instead of a, a rifle for your assault class and it really packs a punch it is great for juggernauts and leviathans they do a lot of damage to them but they are very limited in how many, much ammo they have i mean a jav javelin is a, a big missile that you're launching so you can't carry that many around at a time uh, so you only have five shots with the javelin before it needs reloading and when you do reload it drains the ammo crates really quick and the mules for that matter so you really have to call in a lot of ammo crates to keep your javelin equipped assault class firing uh, so it's a bit of a trade-off you pack a, a big punch with a few shots but you drain all the ammo so if you're other you have other troops that need a lot of ammo or need ammo then the javelin will just take it first because it uses it so quick also the javelin is really expensive to buy for your assault class it costs twelve thousand dollars uh, to buy one, I mean, uh, an assault class soldier only costs a thousand dollars. So, yeah, the weapon is twelve times assaults. Twelve assaults uh, you can get for one javelin, but of course, uh, twelve assaults would also take up ch uh, twelve unit uh, points, and you only have eighty of them available. So, yeah, expensive, but packs a powerful point punch but also really drains your ammo very very quick next we have the minigunner for five doctrine points uh, i think the minigunner is great you can have as many minigunners as, as you like you basically call them in and they they drop like an ammo crate would do so the the mini gunner is is really cool because he sprays a lot of bullets and he kills a lot of enemies but on the downside he costs twelve ten thousand dollars each of them cost ten thousand dollars and they spend their ammo really quick they can't hold that much ammo i think it's around five or six hundred ammo that they can hold and they spend them in a minute or something like that so so 
they really drain your uh, drain your ammo crates very fast or your mules very fast. So if you're deploying uh, mini gunners, you really need to have a mule covering them or a couple of mules covering them so that you can basically race back and forth between uh, load up points uh, at the at the control points or drop in ammo crates like crazy to keep them supplied with bullets but they do do a lot of damage and i think they are quite useful and the final ability that we have in the mobile infantry doctrine is the precision strike which costs six doctrine points and to be honest I think Precision Strike is the least useful ability of them all for the uh, Mobile Infantry class. And it's for a couple of reasons. Uh, it's called Precision Strike, so obviously it has a very narrow or very small area of impact. So you can pull in uh, a Precision Strike and, and you can do it lot of damage in a small area but if your enemies are moving then they will have moved away before the precision strike arrives uh, here's an example let's see that Warning. surgical strike the base is oh, under man. that's not fair he moved so really the Precision Strike is mostly useful against Leviathans because Leviathans are a, have a lot of health and they take a long time to kill, no matter if you have javelins or anything else. They take quite a while to kill and they don't move that much. So against Leviathans, the Precision Strike is useful, but even against a spawning pod, it's not very useful it because you need to get so close to the here. spawning pod that your, your troops can actually fire at it to call in the precision strike. And we, if you have decent there. weapons on your troops, you have a couple of grenade launchers, maybe a flamethrower on a, on a scientist, then that spawning Over pod will here. be gone before the precision strike arrives. So the only scenario where a precision strike is useful is by, in my opinion <sighs> is when a leviathan uh, shows up you can do a lot of damage to it right. with a precision strike but other than uh, that i we, don't really maybe we're mocking the mopping, mopping up this island the today. precision strike i really hope so so those were the six abilities really that you get so. with the mobile infantry doctrine at the moment and let's talk a little bit about there was a, uh, tactics for the mobile infantry uh, because there are some pretty interesting things and that you can ours. do excellent uh, so we're to me the to sparrow is here. probably the this mvp team for for mobile infantry over this way it is really useful to uh, load up some assaults with grenade launchers and, and maybe a heavy or two or a sniper or two uh, and certainly a radio two. operator okay, so you can hold, have five we'll troops have in, in we'll the barrel or is it six five or six i don't remember We're standing uh, but loading here. up a couple of grenade launchers or three a heavy or a sniper or two out. and a so a radio That's operator is really cool because you can then call in airstrikes, not precision strikes, but airstrikes. You can also call, call in precision strikes, but they're not as, just not as useful. And, and you can guys get ammo basically fly over the enemies by staying in the chopper, bombard them, and it looks like they do. And Excellent. a hail of bullets from uh, heavies or some very target specific so bullets that do a lot of damage from snipers. So I think the sparrow and is great. And there are a couple of uses for it. Some you fuel. can both use it as an offensive unit and a defensive unit. So you can have a quick reaction force that you load up in the helicopter, ready to go. If you have an area that is going getting overrun, or and if you have a squad that is going on the offensive, you can quickly reinforce them to, to help service. out. And 
Also, if you can run for a bit. for some reason you maybe left there a gap in your defenses, you can here. quickly get over there here. to make sure that reason. all of a sudden the infected haven't overrun your lines and start taking right, control points behind taken you. taken this. So the sparrow with some, we don't see any some troops in it is really good. Signals I would not recommend worm. using the Warning. assaults with the javelins or the minigunners in the sparrows. They spend their ammo too fast. They have to go back and reload all the time. It's just not efficient. Turks should be able to handle that. But grenade launchers, heavies, uh, snipers are really, really good. Okay, and so course, what I want to do uh, with... So, this team in conclusion, is, I think I want you the mobile infantry here. is a versatile choice for a doctrine. It gives you some really powerful units that, can, that you can deploy across here. the map. Uh, so, so it really gives you a lot of mobility, which and that's the that name island mobile infantry. And the assault class with grenade launchers is just awesome. Uh, get a couple of assaults uh, with grenade launchers in each which of your wonderful. Group. They do, they do business. I mean, they are great. For the playthrough and that we had we with Just the mobile inventory, I managed island. to clear out the map and by day 15. So that is going to be kind of a benchmark for the other ah, two doctrines, some special people there that are in the game for me. Standing up there in uh, so the day air. 15. But I am going to leave myself a little bit of leeway of okay. uh, wiggling room in there because this can come over here the last well. few sectors or controls sectors helicopter were free of spawning ports, I guess because of an update. So Good. I took them very, very quickly. And, we're going to buy and there were no infected sparrow. basically in there, so it was basically just uh, running in there and taking them. But I think maybe it which would group? have taken One, two, a day more to to take those. But four, day 15, four, five, day 16 is kind of a be benchmark for me for the next no. playthroughs that we do. Seven, and the next pl playthrough that we will do will be no. with the Armored Core, <laughs> because we had a poll going, yeah, and more than a hundred of you guys 11. voted on yes. which doctrine we should play next, either the Armored Core or the Engineering Core. And the Armored Core won by a, a good margin, around uh, 65 okay. to 35% voted for the Armored Core. So the next playthrough is going to be the Armored Core. And once I have uploaded it, I will put a uh, card up here stay so that you can now, go so and not take a look at that. Also, once we have played all three uh, doctrines, so we are playing the Armored okay. Core next, and, and after that we'll play the Engineering on. Core, there comes then our new I will put up Fantastic a video uh, comparing another the three thing doc doctrines. So we do a doctrine comparison and evaluate for, um, the well, the best, second best, best and because the they weren't doing so worst good. doctrine, uh, in my this opinion. So it's just my come humble over opinion. Here. Uh, but that will uh, so one that will be something that over there. there. Uh, once we Group played all three, and of course two. I'll make a evaluation of we'll come the up here. Armored Core Doctrine we once we need play the Armored Core the and the uh, Engineering Core Doctrine once oh, we play the engineering, engineering Core. And that's another thing that and I was we'll kind minded of, of uh, that make I a video have some gates open, I think. where we take uh, a look this one at the three closed. doctrines compared to each other. And uh, once this one that has been done, closed to it here over here though. Well. So, thank you very I much for watching, guys. I hope you'll come watch the Armored Core playthrough as Some well. Stuff it that will needs be, to be fixed starting on the 29th of May, 2021, so in three days. So, let's go ahead and fix it. And that. I'm really looking forward to getting into it. So, I hope you'll join me for it. And uh, if you are enjoying Cepheus Protocol, it would be really great if you'd hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, right. and the notification bell. Oh, so we're, on, so we're forth. It really helps out the channel a lot, and I do appreciate it so much. Have a great day, guys.